Hi, we're going to talk about the chromatography lab. So a couple of things that you know, need to know about this lab just as a foundation. Uh, first, chromatography is a separation based on attraction. When I worked as a, um, an organic chemist, I did gas chromatography. So we would uh, separate different gas molecules based on attraction. Um, what most labs do in high school and college is a liquid chromatography. So you're going to um, separate different liquid substances inside of a liquid. You're going to separate them based on attraction. Um, now, you have two phases. You have what's called the stationary phase, and that's called the adsorbent. Here, the stationary phase is paper. Let me give you an example. This, some filter paper. That would be a stationary phase. Um, if you're doing grass chromatography, it's going to be this gooey, sticky substance that's inside of a column, just a tube that's coated with a sticky substance. Um, and then you have the eluent, and that is the mobile phase. That's what can move. Um, in this situation, um, for your lab, you're going to be using um, isopropyl alcohol, 70%, and a 20% um, sodium, sodium chloride. Yeah, that's what you're going to be using in your lab. Uh, so here I wrote down alcohol and the, the sodium chloride. Um, in a gas chromatography is going to actually be the mobile phase. Um, it's going to be an inert gas like nitrogen that would just carry uh, all of the gas molecules through uh, that column. Okay, um, so here is the really big takeaway. It's Molecules with similar intermolecular forces are going to attract to one another. Um, so in this one, I have, uh, you can see a little dot. Uh, this is actually from a marker, it's a purple dot. I did it so that you could see it really well. Um, you might be separating inks, dyes, um, or you could be separating, here's an example of some FDC yellow six food coloring. Um, so for this, what I have my students do is just take a toothpick, They'll um, dab it into the color, and then where their pencil line is, and the pencil line is usually about five millimeters um, above the bottom of the stationary phase, the filter paper, they'll just put a dot, and they might have to do that a couple of times. They might have to dip it in that yellow six and then um, dot it so that you can have a nice visible um, ink dot right there. Now, um, inside of uh, your your dye is either going to be a pure substance, it's one substance that produces that color, or it's a mixture of substances to produce that overall color that you see. Um, what I did in this example is I actually took a couple of different um, FDC uh, food dyes and I mixed them. So you can see kind of this reddish color right there. And my students have to identify which dyes are inside of that. Uh, well, how can we separate that? How can we know that? Okay, first thing that you're going to do um, in this case is you're going to take every food dye, so the seven FDC food dyes, and you're going to do chromatography with them. You want to see how do they react with the alcohol and the water compared to the cellulose. Um, now, this paper right here, uh, that cellulose, we would consider this the nonpolar, uh, whereas these two would both um, be po uh, polar, the alcohol and the sodium chloride. And I'm just wondering which one works better. Uh, which one's going to separate dyes better. Um, so I would take a test tube, um, put my paper, so my uh, stationary phase, put this filter paper inside of here. I've always already put the dot, and then the bottom of that paper just touches the mobile phase, the solution. Um, so the isopropyl alcohol or the sodium chloride solution just barely touches it. And you know what happens, it's just like a paper towel. Um, through capillary action, that mobile phase, the solution, is going to absorb and move up that paper. Now, one of two things is going to happen. Either this dot right here, the dye, is going to be really, really attracted to the paper itself, the stationary phase. If it is, that uh, color will stay low on the paper, or it's going to be really, really attracted to the mobile phase, the solution. And as the solution absorbs, the little dye will move up with it. So I'm going to give you, this is a totally a, um, a pretend uh, scenario. I'm just making this up. I'm going to give you an example that I have a purple dye right here. Um, I have identical, uh, 
uh, let's see, absorbent, adsorbents and stationary based identical pieces of paper. So two pieces of paper, and I just put them in two different mobile phases to see um, how it separates, so that sep which one separates the best. So um, the paper is barely going to touch the alcohol. The alcohol is going to begin to absorb. And let's say that this purple dye is going to separate into actually a mixture of two dyes. It's going to look like this. We'll have a blue dot and we'll have a red dot. That, um, that purple, as it moved up through the paper, that um, purple dot would be gone and it separated into this red and this blue. Now, let's say over here on this one, um, that as this, uh, the bottom of that paper barely touched the sodium chloride solution and that solution begins to absorb up the paper that we get something like this. And there's a little bit of a, oops, a little bit of a blend of a, uh, maybe even a hint of purple right inside of there like that. Okay, and my task is to identify which one separates better. Well, we can actually get a, a quite a bit of information out of this. Um, number one, it's easy to see which solvent is going to separate the best. It's the alcohol. I have a very distinct separation between the blue and the red. I can see both of those dyes. Here, I'm starting to see the red and the blue separate, still kind of a blend. So yeah, is there a slight separation? Yes, but it's difficult to see. So I'd say alcohol would be a much better solvent to use to separate dyes. So then when I went to this um, introductory, mix, introductory mixture that's unknown, um, I know that it would separate the dyes well. It would be easier to see the different dyes that are inside of it. Um, second thing that this tells me, I know something about the intermolecular forces of the dye. Um, first, I know that the intermolecular forces of this blue are going to be very similar to the intermolecular forces of the alcohol. And the intermolecular forces of that red dye are more similar to the intermolecular forces of the stationary phase, the paper. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the blue dye followed, it went with the solution as it moved up the paper, whereas the red stopped. That red dye stopped right there, but the solution kept moving up the paper. Um, why did it stop? Intermolecular forces. Those forces were more attracted to the paper than to the um, solution that was moving to the top. Now, something they want to add to this. Um, when you have the solution stop, uh, so let's say that we come right here. So it absorbs, it absorbs, absorbs. It's going to take maybe like 15 minutes for this to develop and you're just waiting for that solution to absorb and move up the paper. When it finally stops, when you pull the paper out, take a pencil and draw um, a mark at the top where that um, solution stopped. That is called your solvent front. That tells you how high it went. Now we can actually do a calculation from this. You can measure the distance of uh, let's go the solvent front compared to the distance of how far the dye went and that is called your RF factor. Um, it gives you a percentage of well it looks like that this traveled about 85% of the way where this one only traveled about 60% of the way. Um, and so that gives us an idea uh, the greater the percentage up here um, the more similar the intermolecular forces are to the solvent. The lower percentage tells us that the intermolecular forces are more similar to our adsorbent, the stationary phase, more attracted to that paper. Um, now you have to be careful. I want to share with you two tricks that I've seen AP put on tests. Number one, instead of having more of a nonpolar stationary phase, polar um, mobile phase, they switched it. What they did was they had a polar paper and they had hexane, which was a nonpolar solvent. Um, so what that would tell us is the highest dot would be nonpolar and the lower the dot would be more polar, more attracted to the paper. So that's the first trick because almost everything we do in a college and a high school lab is going to be a nonpolar paper with a polar solvent. So they just flipped it. Um, so again, if you know that intermolecular forces attract to similar intermolecular forces, it doesn't matter how you set this up, whatever, um, the higher the dot, 
the more similar those intermolecular forces to the solution, the eluent, mobile phase, the lower the dot, the more similar the intermolecular forces to the stationary phase, uh, that uh, adsorbent. Okay, second trick that I seen from AP. There is a third paper here. And what they changed was the solvent front. They didn't give it as much time to develop. So maybe these two sat in the test tubes for like 15 minutes, but then this only sat in the test tube for eight minutes. And then they had um, two dots that kind of look like this. And students had to identify um, what what the dots were, how they corresponded. And in their mind, they had to go, okay, about what percentage is that? And they had to almost develop in their head, well, let's pretend that this solvent front actually had 10 more minutes, went up to the top. How would those dots change? Well, it would have matched this one. It would have matched the alcohol scenario. Um, so be careful. You do have to look at those solvent fronts. And that's where the RF factor comes in handy. Now, AP is published. You don't have to calculate. You don't have to know about the RF factor. But thinking mental picture, you're, you're comparing the distance of um, where these dyes separate, the colors separate, in comparison to the overall distance that the solution travels. Uh, so a couple of tricks to be aware of when you're doing multiple choice or FRQs on, on your test, whether it be an AP college or a high school test. Okay, so chromatography. There's your big takeaway. The more similar the intermolecular forces, the greater they will attract, either sticking low to the stationary face of paper or following being attracted to that solvent. Okay, have a good day. Have fun in the lab. Thanks.